So this week I just felt like painting an atmospheric sky and I thought what I'd do is paint an overcast sky. Grey skies, overcast skies don't have to be all grey. I'm going to use some warm and cool colors together to create um, an atmospheric sky and I love painting skies. If I paint skies I like to do dramatic ones with lots of interest in them. Because we're doing a sky painting I'm going to take up two-thirds of the paper. I'm using cold press paper which is unusual for me. I don't normally do that and the three colors that I'm using are burnt umber, um, yellow ochre and Payne's Grey. So paper's wet here. I think we need some more blue into that and I haven't wet it enough. I want this to run down a little bit. I want to make this interesting and have some variation in the color. Maybe I'll do some smaller clouds on the horizon. I like to do my skies in one go. I don't like to come in later and add to, to what, what's already there because I just feel it's fresher and uh, more spontaneous if you can do it in, in one go. And I'm, so I'm, I, like, I like what's going on here, but I want to get this dark area to run down a little and create some more interesting textures but I want some of the white shining through too. I've got my board tilted at about a 45 degree angle right now but I like having some light area also. And I don't want to fuss with this too much because then I'm going to lose the effect that I'm going for. So I'm putting this flat now because I don't want to lose the, the light areas with this, the sky showing through. And I might even take a thirsty brush. Oops, I'm going to get a... And I like this little bit of light here and I like it here and down here. So I'm just going to let this dry and for the uh, foreground area I'm just going to do something very simple. I'm just going to take the yellow ochre and when it's dry I'll probably put in some distant hills there. But I just wanted to show you basically how to paint an overcast sky using some warm and cool colors like this here. I think I'm happy with that. So we'll just let that dry. Now that it's dry I'm just going to uh, use some of the Payne's Grey and maybe mix it with a little bit of burnt umber, not too much. Do more Payne's Grey than um, burnt umber and just put in some distant hills. I think I'm going to do it like this because I find when I do it like this it actually gets some interesting um, tops to the trees. I'll use some of the burnt umber with a little bit of um, French ultramarine and do some some trees and I want it to be soft oh, I like that and just soften that and maybe add a little more texture but I want to soften the top edge of this a little bit just, just there 
and since I have some burnt sienna in my palette, I think now that just added something. I would have liked to have left a little bit more light here. You always have to remember that when your paper's wet and your paints are wet and you're doing wet in wet, that it is going to run a little bit, even if your piece is flat. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. I would have liked a little more white here and I probably could take some white gouache and, and fix that. Even the Dr. Martin's white bleed proof watercolor paint, which is very thick, but it might it might make this painting lose its soft edges so I'm just going to leave it the way it is and call it done. So I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration and if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.